Thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting this episode. Go to curiositystream.com slash scishow to start streaming thousands of documentaries and nonfiction TV shows. Detecting diseases early can be a big help when it comes to treating them. And in the case of age-associated cognitive disorders like Alzheimer's disease, by the time someone starts showing symptoms, their disease is harder to treat. So we really want to spot it earlier. Luckily, research published this week in EMBO Molecular Medicine suggests we may soon be able to spot it way earlier thanks to a simple blood test. The study involved looking for combinations of biomarkers, which is a broad term for a biological measurement of the body that tells you something that's both reproducible and accurate. That could be anything from a molecule in your blood to your blood pressure. In this case, the scientists were looking for combinations of molecules called microRNAs. They are little strands of genetic material that influence what kind of proteins get made and how much of them. It's made from the same building blocks as the mRNA that goes into some COVID vaccines, but microRNAs serve a very different role in the body. Different combinations of microRNAs can point to different pathologies in the body, and a few combinations have already been implicated in things like memory impairment and Alzheimer's disease. So the study set out to identify whether certain microRNAs show up before someone develops signs of age-associated cognitive disorders, such as Alzheimer's. The researchers first used a combination of cognitive and blood tests in young humans with no signs of cognitive disorders to identify a bunch of candidate microRNAs associated with cognition. Then, they did a bunch of research in mice and cell culture to narrow it down to a combination of three specific microRNAs potentially associated with age-related cognitive disorders. They then took those findings and applied them to a previous data set of patients with mild cognitive impairment. In some patients, MCI can be a warning sign of Alzheimer's disease, but not all. The researchers spotted their combination of microRNAs most strongly in the blood of patients whose MCI would convert to Alzheimer's within two years of the blood sample being taken. And the signal was lower in other MCI patients from that data set. So the authors of the paper conclude that the signature group of three microRNAs might predict whether MCI will convert to Alzheimer's within a few years. Now, their blood test still needs to be tested further, and it isn't ready for your doctor's office quite yet. Plus, they weren't able to identify a specific disease, just that this biomarker was associated with cognitive decline. The researchers also still need to measure these microRNAs over a longer period of time to really confirm that they predict age-associated cognitive disorders. But the research team is hopeful that someday this test could be a routine screening test in the doctor's office, which would let the patient go on to get formal diagnostic testing or kick off their treatment as soon as possible. The researchers also hope that their findings might give way to a treatment. Their mouse models suggest blocking the action of those molecules could improve cognitive performance, but for now, that's hashtag in mice. So while this blood test isn't close to being ready for the public yet, there is reason for hope, which we are big fans of. And now, if you're ready to lighten the mood from Alzheimer's, guess what? Scientists discovered something cool in poop. Again! Specifically, researchers publishing in Current Biology this week described how humans drank beer and ate blue cheese over 2,000 years ago. Fecal samples don't usually last for thousands of years, but thanks to the uniquely salty and cool environment of the Hallstatt salt mines in Austria, the researchers were able to obtain multiple samples of paleofeces, also known as old poop. They also found everything from wooden tools to furs to old clothing. But for this study, the researchers were interested in learning about the diets and gut bacteria of these ancient folks. And that's where the paleofeces come in. They subjected four samples to carbon dating and found that they ranged from over a millennium BCE all the way through the 1700s. And from those samples, they were able to look at some of the DNA and proteins within. This is what gave them clues about the ancient diets. They were able to reconstruct the gut microbes from the paleofeces and compared them to modern microbiomes. They also wanted to see if they could find out what kind of food was in the sample itself. So they broke apart the samples and looked at them under a microscope where they found remnants of all all kinds of grains and seeds. Given their gut microbes and the microscopic food bits, the scientists were able to infer that they probably ate mostly grains and vegetables, but also chowed down on fruits, nuts, and meat every now and then. The researchers also found something unexpected. One sample, about 2,700 years old, had large amounts of two fungi, one used to brew beer and one found in blue cheese. They followed up these findings with a few other molecular tests to make sure these fungi were actually ancient and not contaminants from over the years. And sure enough, both 
the beer and blue cheese fungi were indeed ancient. They were able to reconstruct each fungi's genome and found they showed signs of older DNA. Now, we've known that our ancestors have been fermenting beer and wine for millennia, but that evidence mostly comes from ancient writing and analysis of old plants. This study was the first time we've been able to tell that from a sample that used to be inside a human body. And for you cheese lovers, this is actually the earliest evidence for humans in Europe eating aged and ripened cheese. In the future, researchers want to continue analyzing more samples so they can get a more complete picture of the diet of ancient humans. And if you want to know what else humans were up to in the olden days, you might like today's sponsor, CuriosityStream. They're a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and nonfiction TV shows from some of the world's best filmmakers. Their original series, Ancient Engineering, will show you how ancient cultures built all sorts of amazing things, from the Great Pyramid to Angkor Wat. And you can sign up for a whole year of Curiosity Stream for under 15 bucks. So if you're interested, you can get started at curiositystream.com slash scishow.